Hello, in this video we are going to see what are supply chain attacks with specific examples of polyfills and sunburst. Let's get started. A software or hardware is not a single entity. It is a link of entities which are bound together. And a supply chain attack is a cyber attack that targets a weak link in the software or hardware supply chain rather than attacking the end user. And what it does, it targets the less secure elements in the chain. And by this, the attackers can gain access to broader network and they can cause extensive damage. And this emphasizes the need for extensive and comprehensive security practices across the entire supply chain. When we speak about the software supply chain, what could be different entities which could be there? No need to read, you can go through these details, but there are multiple entities which are linked together before you can use the product. And when you are using the product at that time also multiple of these entities come in in picture either directly or during the software upgrade and that is what is a software supply chain hardware supply chain also has different elements you start with the raw material and you reach the final hardware product and therein there may be different places where a threat can be injected into these different entities. Now we have understood that the supply chain attack targets the less secure element in a supply chain network. And we also understood that there are two kinds of supply chain, software supply chain and hardware supply chain. And thereby we have two kinds of attack surfaces. So software supply chain attack infects software with malicious code during development or distribution. And similarly, hardware supply chain attack involve tempering with the physical hardware components during manufacturing or distribution. These components can then be used to spy on users or steal data. Now we are going to see two sophisticated software supply chain defects or attacks which were recently seen. Uh, the first one is the polyfills. And before we see what exactly was a polyfills attack, let's understand what exactly is a typical web application. So in a typical web application, we would be having HTML files, CSS, the cascading style sheets and the JavaScript. And there may be different resources like images, videos, files, and uh, some resources like JSON files, which are coming from the database. Uh, so those are the different entities which are bundled together and they are presented on the browser. So this is a typical web application. Now let's see what exactly is this polyfills problem. So there are some specific applications which are using polyfills and this is a JavaScript library. What it does is that it provides some functionality for older browsers that was not available in the older browsers. So they basically fill in the gaps to ensure consistent user experience across different browser versions. And this attack, which was seen in June of 2024, attackers gained control of popular polyfill service polyfill.io. They injected malicious code into the polyfill scripts, served them through their content delivery network, which is also CDN. And what was the impact? It led to users being redirected to scam sites, data theft, downloading of malwares into user devices so how exactly was this achieved let's see so like we discussed earlier we have some javascript which is also being used for a web application and this is the similar functionality if in case you are using hybrid applications or if in case you are using mobile app with this library with this javascript library so there are different libraries which are which you must be aware of like jquery react like chart.js backbone.js yeah so many libraries are there and these libraries are being used by your application to have the javascript functionalities in your application now one of the library which was there was the polyfill and this polyfill library domain was acquired by a chinese company polyfill.io was acquired by them now when this javascript was being loaded from their content delivery network what was done was that this polyfill.js was injected with some malicious code and this malicious code was leading to a lot of security issues which we discussed in the previous uh, slide and all this was because because the polyfill.js had a injected code and the cdn the content delivery network which was delivering these files was infected so let's see it with a pictorial view to have a clear understanding this is coming from threatmon.io so polyfill 
डॉट आई ओ वॉज एक्वायर्ड बाई चाइनीज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बाय द नेम फन नल एंड द मेलिशियस कोड वॉज इंजेक्टेड इन टू द पॉलीफिल जे एस ड्यूरिंग द मार्च मंथ मेलिशियस स्क्रिप्ट वर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड थ्रू पॉलीफिल डॉट आई ओ बिकॉज दिस कंटेंट डिलीवरी नेटवर्क वॉज डिलीवरिंग दिस स्क्रिप्ट एंड दिस स्क्रिप्ट वॉज मेलिशियस इट वॉज इंजेक्टेड विद मेलिशियस कोड applications were not knowing that the script which they are going to use is infected they were thinking that this cdn is a trustworthy and they were trusting the code in the cdn also and websites unknowingly embedded these scripts and execution of malicious code happened in their application and this was detected by google and they blocked google ads for the attacked websites this happened in the month of june 2024 and security warnings were issued and all those things were done so now what has happened here is a software supply chain attack as you can see and what kind of attack it is the package manager so the packages which are meant for the web application one of the package was injected with a malicious code and that led to this attack the sunburst attack as it is known primarily attacked the oran software from solar winds this is a popular network management platform used by many businesses and government agencies the attackers infiltrated solar wind systems and injected malicious code into the software update for orion this update unknowingly installed by by many customers contained a backdoor called sunburst and as we know backdoor is a undocumented way or undocumented software which can let the attacker have access to the main system or the main program or the main software hardware network those kind of entities it would have entry to that is a backdoor so sunbus backdoor what it does was it allowed attackers to have remote control to compromise systems and then they could steal data they could deploy additional malware or disrupt operations if we have to understand the impact of this attack we have to see two things one is data theft which is very clear the second thing is the potential disruption if the attackers wanted they could have disrupted and they could have halted all the operations if they had chosen to do so but they wanted to steal the information not allowing the affected population to know of the attack and thereby they did not reveal their presence by disrupting the operations this is the thing which explains at high level what happened so you can see that there is a dll there is a dynamic link library which is being used by this orion software that was attacked by the attackers so this had a malicious code when this update of this specific software was done this malicious infected dll was also included in the update and this led to the backdoor being activated and backdoor was very intelligent it, it was doing the inspection of the environment gathering the info and then it was also able to connect with something called command and control center which means that they were able to control the software from a different machine different system different server and they were able to gather information and also give commands and control thereby control the system from a different server backdoor sends gathered info to c2 backdoor runs commands from the attacker so here the backdoor is also able to run the command from the attacker so it was as you can understand and appreciate that it was a very very critical attack which was done in all these systems which had this orion software some references here i'm going to put these references on the description as well thank you very much